Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am very very excited to film because we are talking about sustainability. Some of you just like rolled your eyes and clicked off of the video, I understand. Um, basically what I want to talk about today is things that you can do to be more sustainable as a college student, as someone like living alone for the first time, any of that sort of thing where you're kind of like by yourself and responsible for the things that you're buying. I have plenty of ideas. I don't currently implement every single one of these things into my life, which is something that I'm working to change, um, but it's a one step at a time kind of thing. So these are all of my ideas. Some of these things I do follow already. Some of these things I'm going to work on in the next year or so to kind of get myself into some st sustainable habits. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's get right into it. This is going to be probably kind of a longer longer-ish video. Um, not if I actually shut up and get going though. Okay guys, so number one is to replace the reusable Keurig pods that I know you use if you are in a dorm. Replace them with a reusable pod and then just fill it with like coffee grounds. I know everybody likes to use Keurigs, everyone likes the flavored coffee and stuff, but honestly just buy a big old thing of creamer and buy a reusable pod and buy some grounds. I promise it's a lot cheaper than buying those reusable cups all the time and it's good for the environment, which is the point of the video. I don't know why I said that so sing-songy, I'm sorry. Number two is another way to make your coffee. I do use this, I use a French press to make my coffee, which is really great because it tastes delicious. You can make cold brew, you can make loose leaf tea in it um, and you don't have to buy coffee filters. So it's really, really great because there are less things that you actually have to buy to function with it. It's not inconvenient to clean. It's just like a good way to go. And my little one is I think a 12 ounce one and it's so cute and it's only like $16 on Amazon. So it's definitely affordable. I'm so excited about this one. Number three is my Narwhal tea infuser. Um, I love this little guy because you just like pop his head off, fill his tail with tea, put his head back on, and then you just like sit him, oh, he's supposed to go the other way, and then you just like sit him on your cup, and he, he makes your tea for you. Number four, you guys have heard me say it before, you guys are probably sick of hearing everybody say this, but you should have at least a couple dishes, silverware, um, and you're gonna hate me, reusable straws and Tupperware. So, um, I mean, there's not so much to say here. It's just much better for the environment for you to bring your own Tupperware, for you to, um, you know, have your own bowls, have your own plates and stuff so you're not throwing away dishes and silverware. Number five, learn how to mend your own clothes. Um, so my favorite thing about a lot of these tips is that a lot of them will save you money and this one is a big one for that. If you just buy yourself a little sewing kit, has a couple different colors of thread and some needles, some clothes pins, or not clothes pins, safety pins, I literally always mix those up. But if you just buy the little kit and then when you find that you have a hole in your shirt, you can go to YouTube and learn how to do it by hand. You don't have to learn how to use a sewing machine unless you really want to. It saves you a ton of money instead of having to like go to the store and buy yourself a new article of clothing when you can just fix up the one that you have already and it'll be good as new and it will last you for a lot longer. The next one that I have is minimizing your laundry routine. So by this I mean like you don't need dryer sheets, you don't need fabric softener. I mean, if you really want them, you can have them. I'm not saying that you like really shouldn't have them, but like you don't need them. So I just get a giant bottle of detergent and use that for the whole semester. I don't use dryer sheets. I don't use fabric softener. If you really want dryer sheets, you can literally use a tennis ball and it does the same thing. Otherwise there's reusable like cute animal dryer balls that you can buy too. So if you really feel like you have a problem with static and you want some dryer sheets, there are reusable options for that too. Okay, number seven, avoiding fast fashion I understand is really hard to do. 
as a college student, as a person who does not have a lot of money. Fast fashion is generally what all of us turn to. All of us have gone to the mall and gone to H&M and bought like three shirts for $10 before. It's not the end of the world if you need to do that. I understand some things about sustainability are really expensive to do, but a quick way to get around that, especially if you just wanna go shopping to like refresh your wardrobe, is to go thrifting instead. So you can probably find a thrift store, if not like a Goodwill or something, there's probably a cute, more like boutique style thrift store nearby, and it's going to be less expensive. You can find high quality brands and you can get something that no one else is wearing because you bought it from a place that doesn't sell multiples of the same thing. So next one, this is one of my favorites because it's really, really easy. So when you go shopping for like groceries, school supplies, makeup, all of that stuff, check and see if the packaging is recyclable. It takes about two seconds to go and look at the package and see if there's the little recycle triangle and if it does, then you're good. And if it doesn't, look and see if there's something else nearby that's similar that is recyclable as far as packaging goes. Number nine, buying in bulk, especially with the things that you don't use all the time. So for example, if you're not a big baker, you don't need to buy a giant like two pound bag of flour or sugar or anything. Like you're not gonna use all of that before it goes bad. Just go to the bulk bin, bring a reusable container, Fill it up with as much as you're gonna need for like a couple months of baking needs and whatever, and you're good to go. You'll save some money, you'll save the environment, you won't buy a plastic bag of the stuff either. <laughs> Next thing is to bring reusable bags and containers when you go grocery shopping or when you buy in bulk. So when you buy in bulk, obviously, like they'll have the little containers for you, but it's nice if you have your own containers. Um, you can weigh them in advance and write down their weight so that you can subtract that so that you're not paying for the weight of your bag or your jar. Also, those reusable grocery bags that they have at like, literally every grocery store, those are also really, really good. Even if you just bring like two of them, even if you've got like a big old family and you're definitely going to have more than two bags of groceries, just bringing two is great. Also, they're really, really easy to carry with you. If you are on a college campus, it takes literally no effort to just put a reusable bag inside your backpack because you're already carrying it around, okay? Okay, number 11, this one's one of the more expensive ones. It's reusing batteries. So buying like rechargeable batteries that you can use over and over again, it is a little bit more expensive because you're gonna have to you know, be able to charge them and the batteries themselves do cost a little bit more, but Honestly, how many of us use batteries in a lot of things? Like you've got like your TV remote and your like key fob. Having them around and having batteries that can be recharged is so much more sustainable than getting batteries that you have to throw away once they're done. Number 12, this is another really, really easy one. Uh, so for starters, you're gonna need a power strip. I know a lot of people use them just in their homes it's not just a college exclusive thing but you can turn off your power strip when you're not home okay number 13 is a little bit frustrating and it takes a little bit more patience um basically i know fast food is delicious but fast food also comes with a lot of packaging that's not good for the environment, it's not good for you to eat the fast food, but sometimes you can't help but want it. If you are in college, normally the dining hall has all of the fast food staples, like cheeseburgers, french fries, pizza, all of it, and they probably use a lot less packaging. You can probably get a plate and then like put a slice of pizza on it, or get a burger, or like literally load up a plate with fries. So. I recommend trying to satisfy your like fast food cravings at the dining hall rather than going to a fast food restaurant. Number 14 is to make what you can. This one's kind of fun if you're a little bit crafty and you kind of like to play with stuff. Um, you can make like anything from like your all-purpose cleaner to your laundry detergent at home for pretty cheap just with stuff that you would probably kind of have hanging around your house. But if you like to make things that's always an option and it can be really fun and it can be really sustainable. Next thing is one of my favorites, library books and rental textbooks slash online textbooks. Generally, they tend to be a little bit cheaper. Um, library books are totally free. 
Next one you guys have probably heard before, it's just to walk or bike where you can. If you're on campus, you can probably walk to or bike to all of your classes plus plenty of places nearby campus. Um, you can also use public transportation to your benefit. If you're on a campus, there's probably some form of transportation to get you from point A to point B. They might even take you into the city. So those are all good things to check out where you are. Number 17, this one's another fun kind of crafty one. It's to make sustainable gifts for your family members. So ideas are like sugar scrubs. Um, you can make like pancake or cookie mix and stuff um or you can decorate or customize like reusable bags and jars and stuff i think these are really fun i'm probably gonna do some of this for some of my friends and family um over the holidays basically i mean the whole point like don't go and buy all of these things in a bunch of packaging so your job would be to go to the bulk bin buy all the stuff that you need for it from the bulk bin in your reusable containers and then make the things and put them in reusable jars um, and then you have a cute little gift that you can give to your family members. Number 18, I understand it's going to be frustrating, especially if you're from Texas where I currently live. Trying to convince Texans to give up meat or cheese is very difficult. So number 18 is to avoid meat and dairy products as much as you possibly can. I know I crave it, you crave it, we all crave meat and cheese, okay? And yogurt and other things. But it's not the end of the world if you decide to do meatless Mondays or you can go a couple days a week without eating meat or you can avoid dairy products some of the time. Like I don't like milk, I don't drink milk. Easy as that. But for some people, I understand you really, really love the products and stuff. So the least that you can do is do a little bit of research into the brands that you buy and just make sure that they are ethically sourced. So when you're buying like your eggs and your cheese and stuff, make sure that it's like free range, cage free, all of that kind of stuff. Also look for grass fed, free range um, beef and all of that stuff. So just take a look into it. It takes like five minutes to just pull up a list of all of the brands that do a good job of ethically sourcing and you're good to go. It can be a little bit more expensive, but in the long run, it's worth it. Number 19, another really easy one, is to buy high quality school supplies. For me, this is big for, um, I have a tendency to lose things. So if I buy nicer things, I will feel less inclined to lose them. A five pack of really nice pens it's going to a last a lot longer than a 10 pack of really crappy pens but it's also going to have a special place in my heart because they're nice and i love them and i i don't know i just i like pens a lot okay so i don't know if that one actually works for everybody but i just like pens and number 20 we're on the last one this one is another one that um might not work for everybody but everybody can implement it a little bit so it is to digitize your study habits as much as you can. So there are plenty of websites like Quizlet where you can make online flashcards and stuff. There are plenty of websites that'll help you study just about anything. So if that kind of learning works for you, that is so great. Also, if you take notes on your computer, then that will save a lot of paper. But I know myself included, a lot of people really, really like to hand write their notes. And I'm like that. So what I do is I handwrite my notes and then I type my study guides and save them in like a Google Doc and study off of that. So, you know, just like little baby steps. You can always recycle paper, so that's okay. But the less paper you use, the better. And um, we're in a digital world now. So the more that you can adapt to it, the better. All right, guys, that is all that I've got for you today. So thank you so much if you made it this far. I hope that some of these tips are helpful for you. If you do any of these or you are going to make any of these changes, please give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you have other sustainable ideas or if you have other video ideas that you guys want to see. Um, and please subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff. I'm definitely going to try and be more sustainable. So if you want to follow me on my sustainability journey, then definitely subscribe. I'd really, really appreciate it. And you guys know the drill. New videos come out every single Monday and I will see you next week. Bye.